Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm uh, in the Muslim quarter of Xi'an, right in the heart of the city. And I'm going to take you to a famous place today. Not often I do that, is it? <laughs> um, I want to go to the Da Xinjiang Se, which is the, the Great Mosque of Xi'an. Actually, this is the, uh, the northern wall of it right here, just walking up to the entrance. It's kind of nestled in all the little alleyways that make up the uh, Xi'an's Muslim quarter. It's quite an old part of town. Cool little place to explore. Right, let's go and have a look. The Great Mosque of Xi'an and the other mosques in the area serve the Hui Muslim community of Xi'an. Upon first appearances, the mosque resembles a pretty standard layout Ming or Qing Dynasty temple, the entire complex being made up of several courtyards leading into one another through memorial archways, pavilions and halls, all following clear lines of symmetry. There are, however, some alterations. Most notably, Chinese palaces or Buddhist temples, etc., tend to follow a north-south axis, whereas the Great Mosque lies east to west to ensure its alignment with Mecca. Also, this structure, the tallest in the complex, and what clearly looks like a Chinese pavilion, is in fact the mosque's minaret. I just found a little quiet spot. I don't want to bother people too much. Actually, it's really quiet in here. Um, there's hardly anyone here, just me and a few others. Um, so this mosque is famous for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is one of the oldest mosques in China. It originally dates from 742 AD, um, Tang Dynasty China that is. Although most of the buildings you see today are a little bit, you know, they're newer than that, more like Ming or Qing Dynasty. But it still has a lot of kind of relics from the old times, old stone steles and stuff like that. So that's one of the main reasons it's uh, so famous, because it is incredibly old. But it's also one of the best preserved mosques of, of China's ancient mosques and its largest. Of all the ancient mosques in China, it is the, uh, the largest mosque. Um, it is vast. You know, the courtyard itself, considering it's hidden in these small little alleyways. And to be honest, if you're walking through the Muslim court, you can't really see it until it's, you know, until you're basically in it. I think a lot of people actually just kind of walk past it, really. Um, souvenir shopping and don't really even notice it's there. But it's this huge, huge, huge area. Um, great place to walk around. And it's, you know, I've lived here a long time in Xi'an, so, you know, I've been here a number of times. And um, it's one of my favorite places in Xi'an to visit. It's quiet, it's peaceful. And especially, you know, when you bear in mind where you are in Xi'an, right in the middle, because the Muslim quarter is so noisy and busy and full of people. And you've got this lovely little spot here, it's wonderful. The original mosque of 742 AD was probably more authentically Islamic in style than what we see today. It was during this mosque's Ming Dynasty rebuild that elements of both Chinese architecture and Islamic requirements were combined. The courtyards, similar to a lot of religious sites in China, are full of carved stone tablets. These stele, a word that I mispronounced until recently, are carved in both Arabic and Chinese characters. Actually, the courtyards of the mosque are full of stone-carved artwork, many featuring animals, both real and mystical. The dragon, that oh-so-Chinese symbol, makes several appearances. Outside of China, artwork featuring living creatures is pretty rare in the Islamic world. So Xi'an had a pretty large Muslim population for a long time, since the Tang Dynasty. And as with a lot of China's early Muslim populations. Actually, the story of how they came to be is actually quite interesting. So at the height of the Tang Dynasty, uh, 755 AD, China was without doubt the most powerful nation on earth. Uh, wealthy, prosperous, it was a golden age, as they call it here in China. And uh, then a rebellion broke out led by a guy called An Lushan. And it basically almost brought the entire dynasty to its knees, you know, it, it basically almost, almost ended it. And this guy, he was a a general who had ridden, risen very high in the ranks of, uh, the, of the Tang Dynasty army and was much favoured by the emperor as well. Anyway, eventually, I guess, delusions of grandeur, he decided to rebel and uh, within a year, by 756, actually, his forces had taken the capital of uh, Chang'an, which was right here in Xi'an, and the emperor, one of China's most famous emperors, Emperor Xuanzong, Tang Xuanzong, he, uh, he fled and he went to Sichuan with his uh, 
It's a very famous story, I'll save that for another video. But he fled and basically retired and uh, ceased being the emperor. And one of his sons uh, became the new emperor. He became Tang Suzong. And what he did, uh, because obviously the emperor, the empire was, was wrecked at this point. He was basically handed, <laughs> handed a ruined country to take care of. He wrote letters to a lot of his uh, allies around the world. And he wrote one letter to a guy called Al Mansur, who was the, uh, the, the leader of the Abbasid Caliphate. He was also the founder of Baghdad as well. And uh, he basically begging for help, for assistance. And he sent 4,000 Arab troops, mercenaries, like uh, very high-end soldiers. And they came and ultimately did help the Tang forces retake their capital and end the rebellion. And um, as a kind of a thank you, these, the remaining mercenaries, whoever was left, they were allowed to stay if they wanted to in China and settle down. And many of them did, by all accounts, and stayed married Chinese women. And these people are said to be the, the kind of the founders of a lot of the early uh, Chinese Muslim communities. Um, I'm sure Xi'an is no exception, given that this was the capital of the empire at the time. So there has been a quite large Muslim population in Xi'an for you know, over a thousand years, well over a thousand years. And as a result, you know, we do have these places in Xi'an. The whole Muslim quarter, there are about 10 mosques in the Muslim quarter, active mosques, obviously. And uh, they're, they're interesting places to visit. There are some wonderful structures in the complex. My favourite was the Phoenix Pavilion. The central pavilion is said to look like the Phoenix, with the archways at either side being its outstretched wings. The inscription on the front reads Yi Zhen, which means one truth or one god. The Phoenix Pavilion also gives us a nice example of a Chinese architectural skill called Dou Gong. That being a series of wooden brackets interlinking without the need of any nails. There are a few other famous examples of this around Xi'an. I'll save those for another video though. So this is the main prayer hall in front of me. It's the last building you come to. You can't go any further than this. And uh, yeah, only Muslims allowed, so I'm not allowed in. Again, very much in the style of a, you know, it's like a Chinese temple building actually with some small differences to make it, you know, conform to Islamic standards. It's pretty big, apparently it can hold up to a thousand people inside. They actually have TV screens on either side when they have their prayer services. So you can watch if you'd like to. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. I've just left the Muslim quarter. It is freezing cold. Um, hope you had a good time. Hope I showed you something new and interesting in Xi'an that you've not seen before. And I will see you next time. Take care, stay safe, and stay warm. Bye.